the youngest member of parliament when he was elected in 2004. Sachin Pilot, a graduate from Wharton Business School, decided to get into politics because his father, Rajesh Pilot, a popular Congress leader from Rajasthan, also joined politics with Rajiv Gandhi. Sachin Pilot, now a two-term member of the Lok Sabha, is the Minister for Corporate Affairs, independent charge. He's grown in stature, but is the dynasty the reason why he's grown? Questions that we will ask him in this episode of The Real Politics. It's election time in Rajasthan, Sachin Pilot's home state, and the crowds of ticket seekers throng his residence. It's election time and Sachin Pilot is meeting supporters from his constituencies as well as far-flung villages from his state because that's the difference between a member of parliament who comes uh, from the Lok Sabha. He can never say no to somebody who's come from the constituency and that is something that Sachin Pilot has picked up from his father, Rajesh Pilot. Never turn away anybody who's come from back home in Rajasthan. As Sachin spends time with the crowds at his residence, the stamp of his late father, Rajesh Pilot, is all over. In his office, waiting areas for his supporters, and we get ready to ask him questions about current politics and how it is to be part of a young brigade in the Congress. Sachin, you are the face of Gen uh, Next within the Congress. Uh, you have been uh, uh, in, in the government for uh, nearly two terms of the UPA government. You've uh, risen from Minister of State to a Minister of State independent charge. You've got larger responsibilities. How difficult or how easy is it for the younger leadership within the Congress to really make that cut? Well, first of all, we all started young, but we're not as young as we were 10 years ago. So. I personally believe that the party has been extremely kind to someone like me who has been given the opportunity to contest elections uh, twice in the Lok Sabha and then been given the chance to work in the government. I think it's a tremendous experience. And uh, over the years, we've all tried to strengthen uh, the party in any way that we can. And the idea is to have a balance between delivering the goods while being in government, at the same time, uh, rewarding the party for the position that it has given us. Is there a constant comparison with Rahul Gandhi within the party in terms of performance? You see, uh, Rahul Gandhi ji is not only the vice president of the party, that's his official designation, but what he is for all of us is a unifying force. And he's a leader in the Congress party who is able to transcend all the other uh, divisions of region and caste and you know uh, language and, and, and uh, the other fault lines. So he's someone who inspires us to be able to talk about our nation as one entity. And he's certainly one person who is the lead campaigner for the Congress party, Would not only in these better? elections, but also for the 2014 parliament elections. Would it have been better if Rahul Gandhi had also done a stint in government? It would have given him experience vis-a-vis uh, -vis other leaders. Uh, for example, he's always pitted against Narendra Modi. Now, Narendra Modi is a three-time chief minister. He has administrative experience. He has development records to show. In that sense, do you think Rahul Gandhi should have joined the government in UPA too at least and it's a missed opportunity? You see, the, the fact that the Prime Minister had asked many times for Mr. Gandhi to be a part of his government and he has focused all his energy and all his time on strengthening the Congress party. Now, it's very easy for him to have said, yes, I'll be a part of the government. I want to be uh, in a part of a uh, position of power. I want to, you know, enjoy the perks of power. But he's not someone, and so is Mrs. Gandhi. They have never run after posts and positions. If that was the intent, he could have become anything he wanted years ago. But the fact that he chose to work as a congressperson, but as a congressman. But is it too worker, long term a strategy for him? I mean, some congressmen already saying that it's frustrating uh, uh, to work with, the Cong uh, with the Rahul Gandhi because he's thinking too much of the long run and not looking at I winning elections in the short term. You think the Congress party has survived for 127 years without having a long term strategy? It is, it is the Congress party and its leadership which has looked ahead, thought ahead and planned ahead. And that is why we've been able to survive as a political entity for more than a century. So it's wrong to think that Mr. Gandhi thinks long term and you know he does. He is as aware and as, as keenly interested in fighting and winning every single election from municipality to parliament. 
and he understands the nuances of electoral politics and what it takes to win elections, the campaigning, the resources, the, the party workers, how the unity they must be, that must be forged. So he's not someone who's, who's unaware of the ground realities. Yes, the priority should be to win the elections, but the Congress party must have a path, a strategy, a long-term planning in, in, in its place for us to be able to take on the next challenges of next 30, 40, 50 years. Right. And, Mr. and I tell you, this concept of Mr. Gandhi against Mr. Modi, this has just become something that is a favorite of television channels, of newspapers, of discussion But it's rooms. reality. It is not a reality because in India, there is no comparison like that. Mr. Modi is the chief minister of Gujarat. Mr. Rahul Gandhi is the Vice President of the Congress Party. We are electing the political party to rule the country, not individual leaders. And this has become more of a media discussion than the reality on the ground. And the BJP, okay. the BJP by the way, is a party that in the, in, the, in the whole of the country, there are about 10 states where the BJP has not a single MP or an MLA. Now, to think that Mr. Modi can go and make the BJP win, you know, X number of seats in Kerala or in Arunachal Pradesh and things like that, uh, I think it's a bit far-fetched. We decide to pin down Sachin for a more detailed discussion on current politics. Sachin, you're the Corporate Affairs Minister and uh, very recently we've had two international agencies, Goldman Sachs as well as Standard & Poor, virtually waiting for the next government to really make the economy of this country really look up. Is that, is that a sense of a report card against your government that your government has been a total failure at least in UPA too uh, on the economic side. My God, those are very very harsh words. Uh, I'm surprised you used them because uh, frankly giving so much importance to uh, one agency or the other and them deciding how the economy is shaped up I think is a bit different from what the facts are. The fact is for the last... But you wouldn't years, like internal agencies <coughs> or even opposition parties mm -hmm. which is why are we talking about the uh, foreign agencies? No, At least they are unbiased towards uh, a, a well, government led by the Congress. That is because the expectations from the Indian economy from this country have been so high for the last seven years that now they feel that you know we are perhaps not punching above our weight. But the facts are there before you in the last seven, eight years. We've had a GDP growth rate of more than seven, eight percent every year. Last year and a half we have slowed down because of various circumstances globally, the economic situation is not looking that positive. Despite those challenges, I think we've done quite a bit to curtail our current account deficit, to have some policy, uh, you know, fiscal and monetary interventions to stabilize the rupee. It's not afford, about current account no, deficit, the, the, it's about the confidence of the a country, country which seems to be on a roll. It cannot be it's a country which is completely plummeted. That is your opinion. I don't agree with it. I don't no, think, that's not my opinion. No, that's the opinion of Goldman Sachs plummeted. as well no, as Standard that and Poor's. Every Which time, every time there are now. elections in a country, everybody waits for major policy decisions. But I can tell you that this government is not going to stop and wait for elections to happen before we do something. We are going on with what we have to do. Elections always cause some uncertainty in terms of international people who are keen on seeing what the investment climate is. But India remains a bankable destination for investments, both domestic Where and foreign. The domestic industry is completely disillusioned with the performance of the government, the decision-making process within the government. There are no foreign investments that are really knocking on your doors. Numbers speak uh, there differently, are the, uh, There are projects in, in the pipeline in the that have been months, in the pipeline. In the last months. six months, the Cabinet Committee on Investment has approved projects worth billions of dollars which were stuck in the last mile, like you said. So whether it's environment, whether it's land acquisition, whether it's state government Did not coming on late? board. No, I think, you know, there are a lot of circumstances that the got built out. The sense of doom and gloom has overtaken the economy. I am not one of those persons who can very easily be uh, turned into a pessimist. I am very optimistic, very positive about the opportunities that India offers. We are a vibrant economy. We are a dynamic uh, marketplace. People want to be a part of the Indian growth story. Both domestic and foreign investors still believe, and I think rightly so, that India will be the market. But they are the not doing business with the Congress party. They are waiting for the next government. And that's it's where it brings me back to the politics of the present day. The politics of the present day is that UPA1 had a story to tell. UPA2 is a stinking story of corruption, of scams, of decisions that could have been taken, were not taken and therefore UPA2 has disappointed many uh, in this country and outside it. Again, that is your opinion and I think you are using exceptionally harsh words to describe what this government has done. There are n number of achievements that I can list out to you for the UPA2. but. 
the fact that the perception is what you think it is, it not, doesn't agree with what I think. I still believe that we have done tremendous amount of work and don't forget the amount of allocations we've done in the last three or four years for social sector development, for all the schemes that the government's rolled out. We've made path-breaking legislation in this country, food security, land acquisition bill, right to information, the new Companies Act. All these are going to fundamentally change the landscape of the economic architecture of India and that's going to help not today, Yes, it will. But for the next five or ten years, we're laying down the foundations for a for a long-term growth story. For ten years, in ten years, people and we've delivered. Have, people and we've delivered. Have seen you, a perceptible you, you difference look at in the numbers. Life. You look at the number of you look at the numbers roads, of onion prices. Number of, you look at the numbers of uh, tomato yes, prices. That's a you, seasonal, look at, that's a seasonal you look at vegetable up and down. Price, that's and I, what affects us. But, that's what affects the common man. Whether it's EMIs, whether it's interest rates, whether it's uh, prices. So of who's the arguing food. on the fr who's arguing with you on the fact that we need to curb inflation? I'm not one to say that we should. We have nothing so to worry about. Admitting at least Absolute one front on which the UP has been a failure. I am one person who's very candid about what the facts are. We have to fight with inflation and especially food inflation, which hurts the common man the most. We are doing all that we can from the government of India, but we need more support from the state governments. If you look at last nine years that you talked about, look at the numbers. Look at the amount of money we put in people's pocket, whether it's through Narega, whether it's through other employment generation schemes, look at the amount of roads we built, look at the amount of airports we built, look at what the city was, look at Delhi, look at the airport, look at the metro, look at the development in a holistic view. If you start picking quarter to quarter, you can find faults. But largely speaking, the last nine years have been one of growth. India's prominent position in the economic architecture in the world has been strengthened in the last eight or nine years. Yes, today our growth has slipped, slipped down by a few scams? inches. Uh, you were in the corporate affairs one, ministry. You tell me one issue uh, that has come up. There are scams of the Ponzi type, uh, the Sharda scam. There are scams in the spot exchange where investors' money is involved. Why is the government system not able to sense these things before they happen? Okay. Why so do people have to lose money? Whether it's the 2G <clears throat> spectrum scam, the coal allocation scam. This government is a whole lot of scams. And, and that is where the people... Now you allow uh, me to respond. You made your point, Navika. First point is that any single issue that has been brought up, whether it's inside of parliament or outside of parliament, we as a government have never lived in denial. Every single issue that you talked about has been, has been dealt with. The courts are persecuting people. The agencies are going after people. And a lot of issues that you talked about are, have individuals involved who are today in jail. It is because the Congress and the UP are not ones to defend the people who so are involved in wrongdoing. we can't prevent. We can only take back happen, to action. Look, if there is non-compliance, if someone has broken the law, we have not differentiated between Congress or BJP, X or Y or Z. So if everything is so hunky-dory, if the UPA government has uh, taken action, why are all opinion polls at this moment ah. showing a complete downtrend? And the Congress's response to this is uh, predictable. Uh, uh, we don't discuss opinion polls. There was no problems in, in the last nine years, but suddenly there's a huge problem with opinion polls. You want to ban them. You want to stop uh, spokespersons uh, from uh, speaking about opinion polls. Why so defensive? Okay, there are two things. I think off late there has been a certain uh, perception created, and I think rightly so. That some of these opinion polls, I won't say all of them, but some of them are certainly being sponsored. At some level, I'm not putting blame on X, Y, and Z. Uh, but it's true that some time ago, there was a discussion amongst political parties and the BJP and Congress and other parties said that this should be not allowed to be done. Election time may, we must try and curb such opinion polls because it affects the voters negatively. Now today the BJP has done a U-turn because this, apparently the polls seem to suggest that the BJP has an edge. Now, but the BJP says that it's a loser psychology uh, on part of the Congress party to really go into a I mean, situation where you're demanding a ban on them. I, I personally believe that if this stand was taken six months ago, you, wouldn't have, you would not have had this point to attack us with. I think more than the pre-poll, more than the opinion poll, more than the television ratings, what really matters is on, on polling day, which button the voter presses. And let's, I as a congressman and my party are focusing energies on winning those four states uh, which are crucial to us and I'm sure we'll be able to form the government despite the opinion polls that you have projected. I believe that this personality issue based politics about calling people names, using uh, you know, language that is unbecoming of, of senior politicians is not a good thing for Indian politics. up to 2014, 
do you see this becoming a completely you said before uh, that it is not going to be narendra modi versus rahul gandhi but then why are all ministers senior ministers actually demanding that narendra modi debate with them we've heard kapil sibal do it we've heard jairam ramesh do it we've heard uh, salman khurshid do it are you somewhere nervous that rahul gandhi can't take on narendra modi head on and therefore it requires a battery of ministers unfortunately, really, unfortunately uh, you are making it look like it's a wrestling match this is indian democracy this is a parliamentary form of functioning the parties fight elections whoever wins those elections will elect a leader and become the prime minister it is as simple as that but this no, one but on there one is leadership which wins the elections and we have leadership in fact we have a leadership that is second to none and to my mind in the congress party we have a much more united congress party than we've ever had before unlike the bjp which is you know it may have a different facade on the so top so why does rahul gandhi middle, shy away uh, you know when it comes to a direct contrast between why does narendra mr. Modi? why does mr modi shy away from having a press conference why does mr modi shy away from having a debate with anybody in politics everybody has a right to ask for a debate and and and, and question answer prime minister manmohan singh doesn't do press conference Either. That's not fair, Mr. Dr. Panmohan Singh has done umpty number of press conferences. I don't remember the last time when Mr. Modi did. Well, except when he is travelling from a foreign country and he addresses media on on a plane, uh, uh, you know, which has uh, been uh, with him to the foreign country. He hasn't held open press conferences uh, for a long, long time. I don't think uh, even the Prime Minister of India has such a structured format of Q and A like some of our BJP leaders tend to follow. And ultimately, people will judge this government not because of what I say on television, but by a, by the work that this government. is done all over india and people will decide you have your views you are critical about certain points i and i am i humbly accept the criticism that comes our way but as long as it's constructive i'm happy to receive it but this venom has to be taken out of our politics because this country is a young country they're impressionable minds listening to you and me they have got to feel that this country can work together both in parliament and outside do you think the debate has become extremely shrill on both sides because we are now attacking personalities rather than issues it is unfortunate and i'm one of those people who believes you attack the governance you attack the uh, policy you attack the execution but when you make it personal and you you, you listen to some of the speeches uh, some, from some of our opposition party leaders i mean it's it's amazing that to, in today's day and age you're still stooping to a, such a level that you're not talking on issues but you're congress leaders have called modi fascist they've called him hitler it's it's not as if uh, there's been anything wanting as uh, as far as adjectives Uh, on the personal side are concerned i think on that score unfortunately the bjp scores much higher than anybody in the congress but it's not as if the congress has a clean uh, record at least that much you'll uh, concede well i'm saying to you that i believe that this personality issue based politics about calling people names using uh, you know language that is unbecoming of of senior politicians is not a good thing for indian polity uh, sachin uh, how is the result of these four state elections likely to impact national elections in 2014 well every state has different dynamics uh, and in these three or four states it's a head to head congress bjp in up in bengal and tamil nadu there are other political parties involved in in the state elections so it will have some impact but i don't think uh, the terminology used today is like semi final quarter final then final i think things don't work like that national elections people are you saying that because way. you're once again defensive because already the bjp is showing advantage in chatisgarh in madhya pradesh and in rajasthan we will form governments in all four we already have a three term government in delhi we have been in government in rajasthan we'll come back in both those states and madhya pradesh in chatisgarh also i think uh, with jyotiradit leading the campaign in madhya pradesh and every leader supporting him to the hilt chatisgarh has been a close fight all through national elections are fought on a whole different mindset people of this country vote differently for a panchayat election different for a municipal election different for an mla election and totally different for the parliament election sachin pilot is a part of a powerful political family and i tried to get more out of him about his father and the relationship with the first family of the congress as we enter the private section of your house sachin uh, this area is again dominated with remembrances of your father uh, rajesh pilot with the, the then uh, president k r narayanan uh, we also see him uh, meeting a lot of uh, people from his constituency there uh, him in the air force with ak antony and tiwari it must be giving you a whole lot of advantage to have had a father uh, from politics who's given you this start in in the political world absolutely i think i i get um, a lot of benefit from being a part of my father's family and unfortunately he passed away much before i ever joined politics uh, your father good friends with rajiv gandhi that's why he entered politics uh, uh, that's a picture that tells you a story of that 
सचिन पायलट फ्रेंड ऑफ राहुल गांधी एंड इज दैट Uh, is that also a relationship Rahul that Rahul ji is Rahul ji is our leader in the Congress party but the good thing is that working with him one is able to speak freely and frankly he encourages discussion 2014 working uh, under Rahul Gandhi is something that uh, enthuses uh, the generation next for me certainly i think if i have to choose to work under a leader uh, it rather be mr rahul gandhi than anybody else in the world because he's someone who i believe that i can connect with and not just me you know half this country is uh full of young people young nation and all those people are able to connect are you correlate. saying manmohan singh has uh, uh, breached that no, use by date not at all but you see he's he's someone who's not for my generation i respect him he's my prime minister i work under his leadership in the cabinet but mr rahul gandhi is someone who the country looks at as someone who has a tremendous future who can lead this country forward who can make the congress party bigger and better and expand its ideology across the nation and he's dedicated himself to doing that for the last 10 years so time for a generational shift within the congress the younger leadership is ready for it we'll have to wait and watch when the congress really gets to the hustings what are the numbers that they get in 2014 We got an insight into Sachin Pilot's life in this episode and next week another politician on the real politics up and personal